All right, we are going to be 3D modeling a sketch. Um, so I'm going to, I've got Blender open here. I'm gonna delete the default cube. And I'm gonna add, I'm gonna press Shift A. I'm gonna add a reference image. Here's my sketch here. So I'm going to drop it in. And then I'm gonna press N to bring up the properties and I'm just going to reset the rotation like that. And if I press one on my keyboard, it's gonna to go to front view. So we now wanna rotate this so it's visible in front view. Nice. So here's the sketch. <laughs> it's very dumb, it's very basic. Uh, some little characters here. And we're gonna start blocking it out. So uh, going to create some primitive shapes to block it out. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to make for the head, we're going to model the head and I'm going to make a UV sphere down here. I'm going to set the number of segments to 64. Then I'm going to rotate it on the Y by 90. Press shift. I'm going to go into wireframe mode. Oh, one thing I'll do for you guys also is enable screencast keys, which I think is, what's the, oh, shift alt C. There you go. So you can see in the bottom left now, all the keys I'm pressing. Um, I've just realized my logo is in the way of me there. Maybe I'll move me a little bit like this. I, I don't know how to remove my logo there. And at this point I'm kind of, uh, too afraid to maybe I'll move me to the other side maybe like to here because you kind of want to be able to see that window anyway let's try here but let me know if that gets in the way uh, all right so I'm gonna go into wireframe mode here press B to box select and I'm going to select half of the sphere then I will extrude by pressing E tab and scale it down and then we're going to press G and kind of just move it into the right position that seems pretty good to me and then if we uh, come into solid mode and we uh, move the sketch back a bit there you go here's our head um, we are going to uh, press the search and shade smooth and there we go, there's our head. If we want to add more, uh, if we want to make it smoother later on, we can always add a subdivision surface modifier, but we're going to leave it like that for now. Uh, now, let's come into wireframe mode just so that we can see everything else. Uh, let's add the glasses. And I think to do that, we'll add a circle. We'll rotate it on the X. And we will <coughs> move it into position. Uh, edit mode, E, scale, select all of those, E again to extrude on the Z. Let's come back into solid mode. Let's bring it forward. And scale it down a bit. And also I'm going to make the, make it slightly thinner maybe by uh, pressing shift and alt and then clicking one of these vertices and then I can scale it down a little bit and also do the same here if you press uh, shift alt and then click on one of these it's going to select the whole edge loop just like this just the same now I'm going to just make it a bit thinner here right now again if we go to solid mode okay that's fine. We'll leave it like that for now. And let's come into wireframe mode. Duplicate and move it along. Again, if it doesn't line up exactly with your sketch, it doesn't matter too much. The, ske the sketch is supposed to be uh, very rough anyway. So I'm gonna add 
I'm gonna move this slightly that way. Add a cube. Scale it down. We're just creating that middle bit in the glasses now. And scale it that way. Something like that, and then bring it forward, obviously. Yeah, something like that. Okay, class is done. Let's do the eyes now. Let's make another UV sphere, 64 segments, shade smooth. Scale it down super small and then just bring it into position using G and then bring it forward a bit. Pretty small, let's go like that. Control D, duplicate it. Remember to save your file. Or you'll learn the hard way one day. Um, okay, so we have the glasses, we have the head, we have the eyes. Now let's do these little strands of hair. For this we're going to use a curve, Bezier curve. And we're going to rotate by 90 on the Y. And rotate by 90 on the Z. Come back into front view move it, okay it's like way too big, scale it down, bring it down, now we're going to move these handles, so I went into edit mode on the curve and we can start positioning these handles, kind of make it the curve as we like it, hey Arnold, um, I know what you mean, the, the really long head, he's got like a, a, a volleyball head, that it wasn't what I was inspired by, but you're right, very long head, um, maybe subconsciously I was, who knows, uh, yeah, so curve, we're going to add some depth to the curve, so if we open the geometry panel, here we have depth, I think if we go for like 0.05 and then it, you can see it's a bit uh, not very smooth so we can add more resolution here is that what this does yeah so if we add this to 64 and the same with the render because if you don't change the render one it will look good on the viewport but then when you render it it will look crap duplicate move it across okay now let's do the head and again we're going to do all the modeling first then once we're done that we'll do the materials then we'll do lighting camera all of this stuff and then right at the end we'll come back in and add any extra like little details that we think will bring it to life a bit more okay we're gonna do the hat another sphere 64 wireframe edit mode uh oh back into vertex vertice mode Box select. Uh, okay, press Alt A to deselect. Vertice mode, delete vertices. Okay, so that's like the top bit of a hat. Then we're going to select. So Alt, um, Shift Alt click to select the loop. Press E, scale out a bit. E, scale down, come back into solid mode so we can kind of see here. I'm going to press E, scale in, and then E, scale up, oh. and then F just to fill that whole uh, loop. And again, we'll maybe shade this smooth. Yeah, so open the search window, shade smooth. Now, this looks weird, right? because it's trying to smooth out this edge here, which should be actually hard. Like all the other edges should be soft, but some of the edges we want to be hard. So to fix that, we can press Control R to add a loop cut. 
then if we bring it down you can see the shading being affected as we do that. So now if we come out you can see that's a nice hard edge. We can do the same wherever we notice that it's kind of trying to uh, make soften the edge where we don't want it. So like here, probably, yeah, here, maybe here. I mean, we're never going to see the inside of the hat, but may as well. <laughs> may as well just do it. So it looks good. There we go. A lovely hat. Okay, now let's position it. Oh, I accidentally deleted it. Something like that. All right. I don't know, do we want it like sunk into the head or like on top? If we have it on top, ooh, if we have it on top, it kind of uh, overlaps, hangs off the edge, but I think I prefer that to when it's clipping through. So let's leave it. Okay, all done. So now the arms slash body. I think the arms are gonna be separate to the body. It's just going to be one long tube that goes like through one arm across and up again. Um, so let's create a cube. I know I said tube, uh, but this will be easier. We can model it as a cube and then we'll add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out afterwards. So let's scale X. something like that. Now let's add a crap ton of loop cuts. So press control R, use the scroll wheel to add more loop cuts. Let's say about that many, maybe more, maybe that many. I don't know how many, let's go for that many. Okay, then we can select this face and press Z to lock it to the Z and bring it down. Again, it doesn't have to line up exactly with the sketch. Same here. Oh, press G instead of E. Okay, and then we can maybe do the neck. This doesn't line up exactly, so, uh, but I think that's okay. We can either move these along, but I don't really want to do that, which I'll explain later. So we're just going to move the neck slightly to the left. Okay. So we've got the body as a very crap looking uh, cube. If we add a subdivision surface modifier, uh, where is it? Bam. Again, this is not looking amazing, but we will make it look a lot better. Okay. So it's a bit smoother now, but you can see here on the elbows, it's not as tight. So R, control R, loop cut, and see, we can bring it to where we want it. Same with the wrists. Uh, let's do the same here. Let's do the same here. And that's looking a bit better. Let's do it for the, hmm, do we even need it for the neck? Yeah, why not? Okay, search menu, shade smooth. Okay, coming along. Now let's do the hands. Let's add a cube, put it into position. Make it a bit sh smaller on the Y scale. Now we add loop cuts for each finger. So I think, how many fingers? We have four fingers. Well, this guy does. So about there, then we can select each one of these and extrude it just rough for now. Now, um, 
Okay, we want to bring this loop cut with all of this up a bit to like here. Then we kind of want to bring these fingers out a little bit. Now let's add a subdivision modifier. Smooth it. Looks very bad. So let's add some loop cuts just to make the fingers less pointy and also to give us a point at which we can bend the finger, right? So probably in the middle. Yeah, see now if we wanted to, we could grab the end of each finger and like, oh, forgot this one, and bring it back on the Y, oh, bring it back on the Y to just give it a bit more of a 3D feel. He doesn't have a thumb and that looks weird, but that's how the drawing goes. So we're going to stick, well, actually this one doesn't look a bit like a thumb on the drawing, so okay. Let's bring this finger out a bit. Bring this part of the hand out a bit. That's 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 something. Um Hey, when you started your way in Blender 1 to 2 years ago. Well, I started doing Blender um probably like 5 years ago, but I never, it was always just like doing little, little thing, little fun things in it. Like I never used it for work. In fact, the first time I've actually used it for any paid work has been this, this year slash slash last year. Like previously I was just bored and would just go in, stick on some music, have a coffee and like just make whatever I thought was fun, which I think is a good way to start learning. You can't like go into it wanting to instantly get a job in in it. You just have to go in like wanting to create something because there's something satisfying about 3D where you can make something that you think looks really impressive a lot more easily than you could if you were like painting, right? Um, because, you know, it's, it's more like it's more like setting up a film shoot than it is like drawing because you're setting up the lighting, you're setting up the the different props. Um, it's a very different kind of, it's a very different skill, I'd say, to anything else I've tried to learn before. Good morning, Kruki. I recognize that name. Were you a... Uh, did you, your part, you listen to my sister's streams, don't you? The music streams. Okay, so we got two hands. Sorry, I was uh, not speaking while I was doing stuff then. I just duplicated the hand, brought it up, uh, flipped it so it's sort of, the fingers are coming forwards. I'm also going to flip it on the X so that the it's you know both of these fingers are pointing inwards which i think is how it would be <clears throat> okay let's move on to the trousers i'm going to add a cube scale it down Scale it in the X. I'm going to add a loop cut for each of the legs. Scale it down for each leg, just like we did with the fingers. Um, now I'm going to just separate them each a bit and also bring the the old crotch up a bit in fact probably that whole loop something like that I'm 
And again, we'll add a subdivision modifier when we're done. We're also going to add one extrusion for each of these, which is just like the cuffs of the shorts. Um, and we'll add a subdivision modifier. Let's try two subdivisions and we'll shade it smooth. Add a loop cut, bring it up a bit. All right, so it's just resting on that. Again, this is this is not, uh, if you had a notice, this is very stylistic. So it doesn't really matter if things don't make sense. Um, we're just having fun. Okay, foot, add a cube. Bring it down. Let's just bring this down. Add a loop cut. Bring this across. Add a subdivision surface, loop cut, shade smooth. Move it, flip it. Okay, so we've got the basic blocks now. I think maybe we can start adding some materials to this. Oh, we just need the mouth. Let's go back into wireframe. We're gonna add a very basic mouth. In fact, maybe let's duplicate the head, scale it way down, and then bring it where we want the mouth. Something like that. Possibly even smaller. Smaller, but slightly longer. So I'm gonna come into edit mode, bring that across a little bit. Like this. Save the file. Solid mode. All right, I think we're ready to add some materials. Now, I did actually get some colors ready that I liked. Uh, so I'm just gonna off screen grab those colors for a second. Da, 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 da. Oh, you know what we can do actually? I think we can import just the materials if we append this one I made earlier go into materials uh, can we just add all of these I think we can boom there we go so yeah I just made up some colors before that I thought would go well together uh, ignore the names they're wrong so I'll just call this yellow I'm just gonna add some basic color here we're gonna go into material preview mode we're going to assign yellow. Why does that not work? That's odd. I am confused. Are we in cycles? We're in EV. Material. Yeah, it it is it is a it is a pretty difficult program to learn. But to be honest, all the three D 
programs are like Cinema 4D is also really time consuming. I think just 3D in general is like that. Um, just by its nature, I guess. Object mode. Something's gone wrong with my... Uh, there we go. Don't know what was going on there. And for the mouth... Wow. Let's do the skin. So... Uh, black. Nothing special about these materials, so don't worry that I'm like using pre-made ones. They're literally just base materials and I've just changed the color, but I thought may as well import them because it'll be quicker. Um, I think this red color. You can always make up your own colors. Uh, you can always use a tool like Coolers to just go and generate a color scheme to add to your model and try out some different ones. You can add black to the hairs. Let's try brown for the boots. Add skin to this one. And for anyone watching who uh, is maybe frustrated that I didn't make the materials from scratch, I'll just do one material just so you know if you didn't uh, how to do it. So for instance, let's delete the material on the legs. Press new, got a material here name it whatever you well first of all choose a color down with this color picker you can choose whatever color you want let's take a yellow and then you can just double click name it yellow and then if you want to apply that same material to another object just click on it drop down click your material yellow so that's all it is i'm just going to delete the one i just made okay Yeah, best thing about Blender is it's free. That's definitely true. It's a pretty phenomenal tool for something that's free. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so for the uh, top, we want stripes. So we're gonna add some loop cuts here as well, just so we have some stripes. To that, to that. Now we're going to hold alt and shift and click different loops like this oh you have to click the loop on one of the edges otherwise it's going to screw up this one i have to manually select which is annoying something like this uh let's choose this blue that's going to apply it to the whole mesh, but if we now press the plus, make a new material, and let's choose the yellow again. What did I use before? Oh, yellow and blue. Ah, right, okay. So we press assign, and it's only going to assign yellow to those stripes. We're going to change the uh, trousers to use the brown instead, and we're going to have yellow shoes. Yellow and yellow, like this. I just thought that worked better. Okay, so this guy is is basically done. Gonna bring the mouth so that it's closer to the head. Same with the glasses and the eyes and things. Oh. Save your file. Now we're gonna add some whites to the eyes. So to do that, we're gonna add another circle. 64 vertices. Rotate, 
by 90. Bring it around. Uh, I just went into edit mode and I filled the circle. Now bring it behind the pupils and we're going to give it a white material. So just press new, white, there we go. looking good. On the trousers he has these pockets. I'm not really sure the best way to make these but let's have a go. I have an idea. To make these I'm going to create a cylinder. 64 vertices. Rotate it on the X by 90. Scale it down. Now we're going to try and use some kind of boolean modifier to create the pockets. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to duplicate both the trousers and this. I'm going to add a boolean modifier to the trousers and I'm going to set the object to this cylinder and we'll set it to intersect. Then if we hide this cylinder, boom, you see what we've got here? We add a different material to this, maybe like a slightly lighter. Oh, we're gonna to to create a new material, call it pocket. Uh, copy this brown material, paste it so we have the color, and then make it slightly lighter, and then assign the pocket material to this one. Why is that not? Don't know. Right. So we've got the pocket. Now if we bring it... What the fuck? Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> what if we... Uh... Okay, we need to bring both the cylinder and the pocket back. Okay, we delete this cylinder first. Bring both the cylinder and the pocket back to position. Hide the cylinder again. Here we have the pocket. If we actually just parent the cylinder to the pocket, now we can then hide hide the cylinder, move the pocket, and the cylinder is going to move with it, which is fine. Okay. Scale it up a little bit so it's always showing. There's a few little artifacts. Is that going to make sense? Yeah, I like that. Something like this. There's a few little artifacts which I'm going to try and resolve. Fast, exact. Um, how do I solve those? What if I add a subdivision? What if I up the subdivisions? That does seem to solve them pretty much. move it a little bit. I think that is good enough. We can come back and try and solve these little issues later on. Duplicate this. Oh, we know what we can do. We can apply the boolean. Oh, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> okay, show the cylinder again. Select both, duplicate, move them, rotate uh, now we can hide this cylinder, rotate, oh no we can't, so this cylinder, okay, so our machine is dying because the boolean modifiers take up a lot of processing power, so we are going to try and applying the boolean which will basically mean we can delete this cylinder and what? Oh, okay, now we can 
also delete this on top. Okay, so now we have a slightly less polished uh, pocket, but maybe we can neaten it up somehow. Let's have a go. Um, first of all, let's... Oh, you know what we should have done? Okay, go back. All right. So instead of just applying the boolean, let's apply the subdivision first, then apply the boolean. Now we can hide this. And we have, ah, we, yeah, it's perfect, it's perfect. So now we have the pocket and the, there's no boolean going. So it's actually much more performant. So let's duplicate the pocket now. Flip it. Oh, yeah. And then pop it back on the other side. Let's set the origin on these to the center because right now the origin is not correct. So search, set origin, origin to geometry. There you go, now you can see these little yellow dots are in the center of each of these. Oh, that looks great. I love the little pockets. Okay. I'm wondering whether we should swap the light material for the main, if we use the pocket material for the main and the darker material for the pockets, does that look better? Nah, the reverse looks better. Thank you, Vincent. It's coming along. Uh, let's give some the heel a bit more. Uh, just adding a loop cut to make the heel look a bit better. Yeah, yeah, I do want to make tutorial, more tutorials on Blender. I really like Blender. I think one problem is that a lot of the people that originally followed my channel were into After Effects. And so if I post a Blender video, I think some of them are like, this is not what I subscribe for. So, but what I'm going to try and do is do, you know, an After Effects video, then a Blender video, then an After Effects video, Blender video, something like that. Okay, we're going to add the little bit on the end of the uh, glasses. So to start that, I'm actually going to take the middle section of the glasses, bring it along. Uh, then I'm just going to do this process manually because, sorry, I got hiccups. I'm just going to do this process manually, I think. And it's not going to line up exactly with the glasses because it's already veering off course quite a lot. But what we're going to do is we're going to uh, extrude, rotate on the Y, move it down. We're going to just tr basically try and model a little semicircle here just by rotating, moving, that kind of stuff. Like this. It's not perfect, but it'll do. Some oh something like this. Let's look at it in material mode. Uh hmm. I think I think it would be better if they were just both a bit thicker. So if we like scaled up each of them on which scale, which, which scale, there we go. So if you scale and then you press shift and then an axis, so if you press uh, scale and then press shift X, it's going to scale on all the axes apart from X, right? So if I grab both of these shift, uh, scale, shift X, scale. You see it's making it thicker, but it's not making it longer, which is a useful, useful tip. That looks better now, I think. Okay. So the question is as well, do we add subdivision to these glasses? Because that will make them rounder, but I think it actually looks quite nice when they're flat like that. So look at it again. This or this? Hmm. I 
I I prefer this, I think. Maybe. But what we are going to do is we're going to shade smooth the areas that should be shaded smooth. So, okay, what we'll do is we will shade this smooth. And then you see it looks really weird. So we can add some loop cuts, which are going to make it look a bit better. But again, there's not really enough. Okay, you know what? I've changed my mind. I want the I want the subdivision. I want the circular glasses. Let's add to these. And let's add a loop cut. Bring it right up. Uh, shade these smooth. Subdivision. Loop cuts. Shade smooth. Same here. And shade smooth. Now I just wish that the actual lenses were a bit thicker. That's the only problem. All right, here's what we'll do. We'll select this inner one. We'll bring it down a bit so it's a bit thicker. And then we will delete this, duplicate this, bring it along. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's too thick. No, no, I think it's okay. And I'm gonna scale these up even more just so they match. Nice. Okay, so we've done this guy. I think we're gonna go take a quick break while I go make a coffee. Does anyone know how to add a waiting screen? I don't, so you know what we're gonna do? We are going to... <laughs> be... Right... Back... And a mug of coffee. All right, see you guys in a sec.
Okay. I am back. <clears throat> um, had some coffee, had some toast. I'm ready to go. It's complicated to make it simple. We always try to make it complex. Whereas with simple shapes, we can do pretty things. I, 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 I agree, man. I really agree. And also, that's great for me because I can't draw. So then I can just draw something really bad and then say it's stylistic. And then it's, there you go. It's great. Okay. Just grab something. <clears throat> Gotta put on my thumb brace because I got thumb issues. Fun. All right, let's go. So we've got a choice here. We can either start setting up the lighting, the camera, do a little render, or we can do the other character first, get it all done, then set up lights and things like that. I would say let's set up the other camera the the uh, other character first okay so what we could do though is group all of this stuff together as one collection so new collection let's call it let's give him a name let's call him carl carl okay grab all of this stuff drag it into carl there we go. Now we can just, uh, oh, we don't want to grab everything. We've got the reference image in there as well. Let's move that back out. So let's name this collection just like scene, which will have the camera in it, the lights, the image. This we can, this cylinder we can now delete. So we're not using it anymore. I would say as well, just for good practice, this isn't the funnest thing in the world, but we should probably go and name our objects. So let's just call this hair, hair two, glasses, right, glasses, left, ah, okay, that's the whites of the eye, so whites. Well, let's say just say just say I white right I white right I white left oh actually is that white coming out of the I'm gonna move it slightly to the right because I think it was creeping out there and presumably then the same for this one no this one's fine okay what's going on with the, oh the scaling here has screwed up when I was scaling it we're gonna to have to delete that and do that again because I'm not I'm not happy with that. So I'm just gonna duplicate, move this across. It's because I scaled it on the two axes. What the hell is happening here? Oh, it's because there's an edge loop. Oh, flip an egg. Okay, delete faces. There you go. Now we've got this one face. Oh, we've got no face actually now. It's deleted both of them. Okay, so create a new face by pressing F. The scaling here is not right. Something like this. Okay, let's try this. Uh, right, so we're just make we're just remaking this. What is happening here? Delete what dissolve I don't know what is happening here dissolve vertices okay you know what we're gonna start from scratch here we're gonna delete that we're also gonna delete this because I don't even know what's happening okay let's make a new one sometimes it's better to just just scrap it start again it's not going to take too long. Ba 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 ba. Okay. 
we're going to scale on all the axes apart from X by pressing shift X we're going to scale we're going to move it on the Y so that it's in line with the others uh, scale it down a little bit. scale it just on the Y so it's thinner it's more of like a rectangle cuboid so let's add our material now just so it's easier and also yeah we'll come back and we'll add the um, we'll come back and we'll add the subdivision surface modifier afterwards duplicate it bring it over here do that just double check okay and it's not lining up but it doesn't matter okay and we're gonna just do this bit again because it's something something screwed up in that process um, let's move that back up something like that yeah I mean something as simple as that really okay add the so we got the black material now we add the subdivision modifiers and we loop cut control R shade smooth whoa and yeah maybe make the ending a little bit more like that and again subdivision surface and loop cut shade smooth boom not bad okay now we're there let's move on to the other character and I think maybe let's hide Carl because he might get in the way Oh, we do want okay so let's create a new collection let's call this one uh, Linda she looks like a Linda maybe duplicate the head of Carl because we may as well just use that but drag it into Linda oh we hadn't finished naming our layers here so pupil right head Pupil, left, hat, mouth. Done. Oh no, we're not. There's <laughs> loads more. <laughs> Glasses, rim. I guess. What I don't. What, what do you call that middle bit? Um, jumper. Hand. Uh, our right, his left, so I'm just going to say right, hand, left, shorts, or trousers, I don't know, foot, left, foot, man this must be so fun for you guys, just watching me name layers, um, pocket, left, pocket right uh, glasses edge rim thing I don't know ear ear I don't know uh, edge I'm just gonna call it that yeah as the great Ben Ben Marriott once said or said multiple times always name your layers okay So let's, okay, so we've got Linda's head here. Let's just name them as we go along now. It might be easier. Her head is going to be at the preview for this stream. The model is complete. So basically what happened is the first um, time I did this, I made the first character 
and then I realized that the mic I was using was terrible and the stream was basically unusable and also it was my first stream and I wasn't I didn't even uh, successfully I wasn't even streaming I thought I was streaming but I wasn't so it was a complete disaster I did it for like an hour and then stopped and realized that the stream hadn't even been streaming and that the audio was horrible so I thought well I've already made this guy I may as well use it for the thumbnail so people can see like what the, what I'm gonna be making um, so some some good came of it but no that's why that's why the preview shows it um, Oh, I just noticed this looks a bit weird with this stripe. You know what? We're gonna leave it for now. It's it's. I'll get bogged down in that if I if I focus on that. Okay, so head for Linda. I'm just gonna move it into place. It's way longer than his head, uh, but we don't want it to intersect with his body. So maybe let's make it slightly less. Something like this, or, or we could have it. I oh, look, see, and the drawing her head is actually in front, so I don't know if we want to actually have her like here. <laughs> I don't know. Let's leave it for now. Let's leave the head like this. Okay. Create a cube for the for the arms. Okay, we're going to grab this side of it, bring it to here, grab this side of it, bring it all the way to here. Okay, now her arm is in the drawing, I don't know the best way to show you, but in the drawing, her arm is like behind his, but her head is in front of his, which doesn't really make sense. So. What I can do instead is I'll make the head and the arm behind. Um, that would make more sense because then the head can be longer and it can go behind the arm. So like something like this. I'll leave the head for now, but the arm's going to go behind like this. All right. <clears throat> so let's add some loop cuts to the arm and we're gonna hide Carl for now just so we have we can see better I can already tell this hand is going to be a bit tricky but we'll get to it we'll do it we'll get it done um, let's name this cube body and add a bunch of loop cuts let's say mm, wherever the neck makes sense. Let's say that. Because now we know we can just bring this up for the neck. Okay, extrude this down. Add some more loop cuts. Doesn't have to be exactly right, that's the thing. Um, move this across. Whoa. Hmm, okay, this is not exactly what I was... I think maybe we need to bring some of these up a bit. So I'm just going to box select, bring it up. Let's try that. Um, now the body, this is kind of tricky. So, so, add a subdivision, add a loop cut, sort out the elbows like we did last time, sort out the neck, um, the reason it's tricky is because the body, this hand is like going inside the body. This is coming down. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. Okay, what I'm going to do is create a cube.
Make it vaguely the right size. Let's see. Something like this. Make it slightly less on the Y. Grab these two edges. Bevel by pressing Control B. Then use the scroll wheel to add more bevel. Maybe this will work. And then if we also added a bevel modifier to give like that edge some bevel. Wow, I'm surprised that worked. And then we can modify like the width, something like that. Now if we shade this whole thing smooth, I think that's the kind of shape we're going for. And then we can trouble is okay we bring it we bring it to the center of the body like the the body should be in line with the head really you mentioned ben marriott so you work in after effects too or you use it just yeah i work in after effects too um it's like a lot of the time now i'll use i'll be making like a 2d animation and for a section of it i want there to be some 3d so i'll like make it in after i'll make it in blender i'll add transparency then I'll take that into After Effects and like incorporate it into the animation and uh, you know add some stuff in the background because there's transparency. So I kind of use both. Just basically whenever I need 3D, I go to Blender now. I I went th I, I went through a phase of like not really knowing which application to use, Cinema 4D or Blender or whatever, but I've kind of settled on Blender now. Okay, I think what I want to happen is I want this arm to come forward. Um, how am I going to do that? I could rig it with a skeleton. Is that the best way to do it? Or should I just... The other way to do it, set on proportional editing. Grab this face. Now move this forward you see it's looking a bit weird here a bit weird indeed that's maybe not the best way to go but let's hear it out let's see what happens and obviously this would have to come out as well I see it screwed up all that stuff at the top but that might be okay because we can reset that afterwards Okay, now let's fix some of these. I think if we oh turn off proportional editing, now we can go through and try and fix some of these issues. Like these should be rotated more in line. Like this. Yeah, I just think Ben Marriott's really good as well. I really like his, his style and his way of teaching and stuff. Um, again, I might scrap this method and go for the rigging method instead, but I, I think this possibly could work. And then the hand's going to be kind of gripping here. I just think we need to sort out a few of these issues. I think this just needs to be rotated a little bit and brought back that way. Same with this one. I think that's that's looking okay. And then what we can do is this is all screwed up and uh, can just delete edges. Oh, I ah, see I had this one selected here. So deselect that, delete these edges, um, in fact, delete, uh, I want to delete vertices, yeah, and then we can re-extrude this, first of all, add a face, bring it out again, add some more loop cuts, think that is about right. Then that's straight again. I think that's looking okay. 
All right, that was a bit tricky, but we got it. Okay. <laughs> hey, Luke. How's it going? Uh, yeah. Blender is very cool like that. I mean, this 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 uh, reference is literally like just a plane, and you can move it around like any other three D object. It's a it's a pretty nice way of working. Um, it can get annoying though if you like obscure your own drawing and then you like have to bring it up to look again. Uh, I think you can make it so it's like X ray, but it, none of the none of the solutions are perfect. I don't think, but like this is one way of doing it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do the eyes now. So circle. Um, oh, what happened to our circle? Where is where is our circle? I don't know. Let's create another one. There it is. Rotate by 90 degrees. Bring it into position. Go back into wireframe mode. Position it. Let's bring it in front. It's already in front. Good. Let's press F to fill it with a face. That means we can then add a, uh, oh, there we go, F. See now it's a circle. We filled it with a face. And we can see that, okay. Let's do the eyelashes now. I think curves again are the best option. So what we will do is we will possibly grab a curve from Carl here and we will bring it over to the, do the eyelashes here. And we will decrease the depth because eyelashes are probably thinner. And we will just reposition these handles. Like this. Duplicate it, reposition, duplicate it again, reposition. See, curves are great because they're like non destructive. You know, if you mess up a part of a mesh, a lot of the time you have to delete it and do it again, but curves you can just change anytime and it's great all right we got some eyelashes there they look very rough but you know what you gonna do now with these we're gonna add a taper to the end which I think taper object Taper radius. Okay, we're gonna add a taper object. Okay, so we'll create a new curve. Uh, now, this might get a little bit confusing, but bear with me. Call this curve taper. Click on one of these lashes. Add taper as the, as a, add our curve as the taper object. Now you see here, it's done something, right? So basically what's going on here is the position of oh, flipping it the position in one of the axes uh, the position in the y axis determines the thickness uh, at each end right so if i just bring all of these forward a bit so like here okay now you can see better so for instance if i bring this one back you can see now, look, the edge. So we want this side of the curve to be thick, thicker, and this side of the curve to be at zero, to be at zero in the X, or zero in the Y, sorry, which is exactly what it is, um, which means it's gonna taper off to like zero, essentially. And now we can just add this curve as the taper object for each one. Taper. Taper, taper, and this is not also non-destructive because now we can go and change the taper for all of the hairs at the same time whenever we want. Um, 
So you look, um, ba if we wanted to make them thinner, thicker. Would love to get my head around Blender. I've just about managed After Effects. Yeah, Blender is a whole nother kettle of fish. To be honest, After Effects and Blender are both very complicated softwares with like lots and lots of features. You'll never learn it all. Like, even in Blender, Blender has a video editor, which I've never used. Um, all these panels up here, I never re I've done like a tiny bit of sculpting, scripting. I have not really done that much compositing within Blender. It's always done within After Effects. There's so much in Blender that I have never even touched. And I think it will always be that way. It's just too much. Pro and con of having like an open source software, I guess. They like develop it very quickly. Sometimes to the point where it just gets so f featureful that no one has a clue what it can even do anymore. Um, okay, so we have the body. I think maybe, uh, not sure yet. We're gonna try and do the, some of the hands. These hands are gonna be a little bit challenging, um, but we'll create a cube. And move it into position. Something like this. Okay. Whoa. I'm going to disable this drawing for now so we can look behind. Now we're going to create a, a loop cut here. And then we're going to create uh, four loop cuts like this. So now we can extrude here, and these will be our fingers. You have to extrude them separately or it's going to extrude them as one thing. Again, this looks terrible right now, but we will we will tidy it up. Bring them slightly out just so we can see where they are. Add a subdivision surface modifier, which will immediately make it look a bit better. Increase the subdivisions. Shade smooth. Now we add some loop cuts. First of all, we're going to add, uh, we're going to move these up, move this whole thing up a bit. It's going to be a bit of a finicky thing to select everything. Let's go into wireframe mode, which might make it look even more confusing, but it's easier. Okay, we've got that all selected, so now we can bring it back this way a little bit. Or maybe we should just bring the hands out. I think what we'll do instead is we will maybe bring this edge like this and then if we add some loop cuts for the fingers just in the center I still think her fingers look too short in comparison with the rest so okay fine let's try select this again Probably should have left it selected, but and now we can maybe bring this out a bit. I could just extend the fingers, but doesn't doesn't feel right. Okay, the fingers are too fat. Obviously, nothing wrong with fat fingers, but for this particular design, let's try this. And what we can do, turn on. See, if we scale the fingers like this. Uh, the this loop cut behind doesn't scale either. Um, if you turn on proportional editing and then use the scroll wheel to define the, the area that you're proportionally editing, uh, we can select the x-axis and you can see it's scaling the other vertices behind it, the other edge loops, a bit less than the one uh, that you're scaling actively. Could be a really useful tool. So let's do this. I've been using Premiere Pro for editing for years now, and I'm sure this stuff I've never, never used or seen just comes down to what you're trying to achieve or your work style. Definitely, yeah. I mean, these these softwares are really, really feature heavy, and I'm the same. Like I've done editing in Premiere Pro, but I've never done any color grading or anything like that, and things like that just just intimidate me really. Um, 
And I don't really have any desire to learn color grading either. Just not something that interests me. But that's the beauty of these these softwares. They can do a lot. All right. Oh, what am I trying to do here? It's it's coming together. The hand the hand is coming together. I think what I want to do though is just make this thumb a little bit thinner. Yeah. And the same here. Okay. I know the join here doesn't look great, but we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. We'll just get the building blocks in. And then we will uh, go from there. Okay, let's do the other eye. Oh, we need to re-enable our sketch. Let's do the other eye by selecting... Oh, that's going to be annoying. Okay, let's just name these things. Eyelash 1. Eyelash 2. It's always the funnest part. Eyelash 3. When I started learning color grading, my editing life changed forever. Yeah, I bet. Eyelash four. I just slap a lot on it, you know. <laughs> um, I left. Okay, now we can. Grab all of these, duplicate, wireframe so we can see where the eye should be. Okay. Maybe I will, um, can we join these together? Or maybe put them in their own collection? Yeah, let's maybe create a collection within Oh, they're all in uh, Carl's right now. Bring them into Linda. I think within Linda, new collection, I, right. So we don't have to select all of these eyelashes every single time. And then, I, left. All right, so do the pupils. Again, we'll probably just steal his pupils. That's kind of a terrifying sentence to say, but we're gonna do it. Linda, have his pupils. Duplicate. Oh, it's coming together. It's coming together. I think the hair is gonna look a little bit weird on uh, uh I should probably do something right now, but yes. Uh, good luck with work. See ya. Thanks for joining. <sighs> yeah, the hair. It's. <laughs> it looks fine in the drawing, but I don't know how I'm gonna do this in 3D because the hair. I mean, for for the for Carl, his hairs are coming up like this. But because this is a capsule shape, um, I'm not really sure how I do that here. So maybe let's leave the leave the hair till last because I'm not really sure how to solve that. And we're gonna have some uh, enough to do with the rest of it for now. Now what we can do though, duplicate this hand, and maybe we can reuse this uh, for this other hand that just need to flip it on the X something like that ok 
Okay. And then... This is a little... This is going to be a little tricky. Because we want this arm to join up with this hand. We could just use a right angle, but that's going to look a bit weird. Instead, we could do another kind of proportional move. Okay, what we'll do... We'll do a proportional move, but we don't want the proportional editing to affect any of this other stuff. So let's hide this by pressing H. Then let's go back to solid mode. Grab this face, proportional editing, scroll wheel up, move it forward on the Y. Move it even more forward on the Y. Grab this one. Bring it back. Huh? Oh, not that one. This one. Why can't I select this face? That's odd. Oh, because... Right, maybe because... No, I literally cannot select... Is there no face there? Why can't I not select this face? Is there no face here? Oh, did I hide it? I hid it. My bad. I hid it when I hid all the other faces because I didn't deselect. Okay, do it again. Hide it. Okay, now select this face. Scroll wheel. Oh, okay. Maybe not the face, but the whole thing. Bring it this way. Oh, God. Okay, maybe... Let's grab like the middle of it, scroll up, and then we can make the whole arm come back on the Y. Like that. Then maybe we can literally rotate this whole arm. <laughs> this looks dumb right now, but bear with me, bear with me. We're going to rotate the whole arm. Bring it like this. Okay, okay. Looks okay. I think we need to... I mean, it's it's not supposed to look completely realistic, so... Maybe we could just make... We just want to make this uh, a bit more of a... Well, a bit less smooth of a turn, I think. So we turn off proportional. We will move... Oh. Move this. Move this, uh, like here. There. Now, this, this is looking really thin, so I'm going to bring it out a bit, so it's a bit thicker. Same with this joint, same with this uh, pit here. Um, I think that looks okay. I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, and for the hand, I'm going to bring it out a bit. I think that makes the joint issue slightly better. Hmm. Okay, let's move on. Let's re-enable the image. We need some feet. We need some feet. Okay, let's add a cube. Bring it down. We also need this edge maybe to be, see I can't add a loop cut because I've changed it. How else would I do that? Okay, here's what we'll do. Extrude this edge. Oh, what have I done? What have I done? Oh, okay. Extrude this edge. What is that doing? It's the bevel that's 
screwing up. So we'll disable the bevel for now, maybe? Nah. Okay, that's not going to work with the bevel. We'll leave it for now. We'll move on. We'll move back on to the foot. Okay, we have the foot here. Let's extrude. What's the best way to do that? Um, we need this edge to go down here. Okay, here's what we'll do. It's got this side of the foot. I got this side of the foot. This side of the foot is going this way. This side of the foot is going this way. This edge. We're moving along to there. This edge. We're moving along. We're just gradually making it into the shape we want. Add a subdivision modifier. Yeah. To add to make the toes a bit nicer. Just adding loop cuts to sort of tidy it up. <laughs> Learning 3D is so hard. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. That you you do get to a certain point where you feel comfortable enough that you don't have to be constantly googling stuff and that makes the experience like so much better because you can actually just focus on something for a little while but until you hit that point it can be really annoying because you just feel like you're making no progress you just uh you start on something and as soon as you start it instantly you just hit a problem and you're like okay well now i have to go solve this again um Okay, so, ah, uh, right, yeah, so this is going to be the skin, and we will probably make two separate skin colors for them because it's weird that they're exactly the same. Um, let's do a skin, uh, what's her name? Linda. Copy it, paste. Uh, I don't know. For now, let's just make it slightly different. But we might come back at the end and change things. Oh god, she looks like she has jaundice. No, that, I don't like that. Just something slightly different. Okay, maybe that. I realized that I forgot why I subscribe. Your tutorials looks really interesting. Thanks for your work, man. Ah, oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it. To be fair, I haven't been uploading for a while, but I'm starting to get back into it now and hopefully should be more of a regular scheduled thing. Um, And that's why I'm trying live streaming because the editing process with videos takes it out of me. It's a lot of effort and uh, it's hard to keep up a schedule, like a weekly upload when it's hard work doing the editing. I script all my videos because um, I want to make it the best. Like I want to make them like quality over quantity, uh, but I don't know if YouTube really um, helps that because you, in terms of like how it works, you you get revenue based on watch time rather than number of views. So if you make like, uh, wait, what am I trying to say? Oh yeah, no, sorry. What I'm trying to say is like YouTube seems to favor people who upload frequently uh, even if it's not like the best quality um, whereas I like to kind of take my time and make something super polished and uh, nice and like 
the best that it can be but then that means I only upload a video like once a month and it doesn't really help the channel grow or anything so um, that was kind of my why I decided to try and get into live streaming because that means that I can take my time with something I don't have to worry about the editing of it um, that's the main thing yeah just don't have to worry about editing which is what takes up like all of my time um, if I'm trying to especially if I'm trying to like work like an actual job while also putting up videos it's just a lot I started 20 years ago and quit because of its hardness for 20 years I kept distance between 3d and me now I want to learn it but I guess I'm too old to learn things dude you're 38 you're not too old to learn things for sure definitely not I mean as well like don't don't learn it I guess if if you're not interested in it either um, because what's the point like you're only gonna put the time in if you are kind of actually interested in it and you find it fun and stuff um, twitch I get, yeah you probably could I just never use twitch um, so it's just another it's just another platform to, to learn. I'd rather just stick with YouTube for now, especially because my main channel is on YouTube. Um, and then people can go onto my channel on YouTube and they'll see like all my past broadcasts and stuff in the same place as my other videos. That was kind of my idea, but yeah, maybe I should look into Twitch. I'm not sure. Just haven't considered it really. All right. So sorry, I wasn't I wasn't uh, talking about what I was doing there. She's got a bracelet in the drawing. I just kind of added a band here, but it looks a bit weird. Maybe I'll add like a, a sphere. Okay, let's take the pupil. Let's add it. Add some like spheres to the to the band, and we'll add some colors and things. Maybe. Uh, or maybe just that. Oh, maybe just this. Doesn't look terrible. Um, colors. I don't know. Let's just add the red for now. Maybe a black bead. Looks a bit too perfect being on there like that. We'll come back to it again. We'll come back to it. Um, Yeah, you're never too old to learn something. My mum's like 63 and she recently took up painting, done literally no painting the whole of her life. And she just keeps practicing and she's like insanely good. So yeah, don't let that stop you. Okay. Okay, she has a flowery dress on. So we should probably unwrap this make a texture in like illustrator with a pattern like a flowery pattern on it and then apply that to this should we try that let's try it um should we do the true try the hair before we do that the mouth okay add a mouth let's do the easy bits first before we do any of the hard bits Okay, make her mouth slightly longer. Um, <laughs> the 3D, it's always funny when you like just turn, turn it and you realize how everything's completely off. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I left, I right. See, we created these earlier, so hopefully we won't have to... Wait, why can you not... Select select objects. Here we go. Select objects. Oh, I want to select both objects. Why can't I do that? Okay, maybe we can't. Pupil should be in I right. Pupil should be in I left. Select objects. Okay, what we could do is put them both in the same collection and just call it eyes. 
that way we can select objects bring it back and then also just so these don't look completely weird let's extrude the eyes a little bit so that the hair the eyelash is aren't just going into nothing and also we so we can't see the back of the pupils okay definitely don't like this red for that band maybe the yellow it's better all right what now the hair how are we going to do the hair we could just do curves it's it's going to look weird but I don't know how else to do it. Let's add a curve. Scale it. Bring it over. Um, like this. Let's rotate it in the Z ninety. Rotate it in the Y in the X by ninety. Ah. All right, let's try that. Okay, well now we'll start putting it into position. First of all, we will add some depth. And we'll also add our taper object. And we will start positioning it. see how this looks so the way it kind of looks in the drawing is we're gonna have first of all we're gonna have to subdivide it which is gonna add a piece in the middle let's go back into wireframe let's have a look here okay so it kind of bends in the middle like this something like this like that but obviously not completely annoying and then this needs to be higher further to the front I guess or maybe just this needs to be more like that yeah okay and now let's maybe we might have to re-add some of the curviness to it uh, How's that? I think that looks okay. And then we add a black material to it. Yeah, it looks all right, all right. Then we'll just add however many we see fit and then might have to slightly edit them to get them to come out. Okay. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. We'll keep them all the same for now, and then we maybe we go back in afterwards and change how some of them bend and things. Um here. So we got four. How far how far to the left does it go? I think that's where the last one is. And then we'll add a smaller one here. Okay, now let's add some I think maybe let's get rid of one. What do you think? Nah, let's keep it, but bring it down a bit. 
and make this one shorter because they're all getting a bit long towards the end. Yep. Okay. Let's add, let's maybe like change how this one moves. Like, bend it the other way or something. It kind of looks weird when I do that. <laughs> it looks a little bit odd, but I think let's leave it. I think it's fine. What if we added like a black section to the top so that it looked like there was hair across like the whole thing? The thing is, he doesn't have hair like that. You know, for instance, like if I went into edit mode and I selected like these and I just colored them black would that would that help maybe add another material new find the black one assign does that help <laughs> no no it does not all right we're gonna leave it. We're gonna leave it. Hmm. I mean, that's what the drawing's like. So, screw it. All right, onto the texture for um, the dress. Let's open Illustrator. Let's press new file, create a new file. All right, so we're going to create a pattern that has a flower on it. Um, and the color, I don't know about the color yet. We'll deal with that later. So what we have to do for now is just create one flower. Um, let's create a petal now. It's maybe like hmm. You know what, I actually kind of like that. What do they look like in the um, drawing? Like that. So more like... Oh, what did I do there? Okay. Did not know that did that. More like all the edges are beveled. And then it comes all the way down to the center. Let's remove the stroke. Hang on a minute. So the circle will be like a different color in this example, I think. Let's grab the yellow. Let's grab some of the colors. So grab the yellow from here. Hex code. Let's make the leaves yellow. Make the middle white, I guess. Then we can't see that now, so let's add a background color so we can see. Let's say the dress is going to be what color? Maybe the red? I think the red dress. So let's keep this as the background color. Oh, slap it behind. Um. We will bring this in front of the petal and we will 
set rotation here. Uh, if we think the best way to do this, add the transform effect, add multiple copies, rotate. Oh, ah, anchor point to the bottom. 30. Oh, we have to do some maths here. So like if we're adding seven copies, let's add, so let's add eight, but then increase the angle to 40. Is that, wait, how does this math work? Is it 360 divided by eight then? 45. Yeah, it is. Mm, okay. Does that look like a flower? I don't, it's, it's not great. It's not great. Maybe if we decrease the number of petals and then transform, let's go with, I think the drawing has six. So 360 divided by six, but then we have to change the petal a bit to be, uh, we need to add uh, some points in the middle here. And then just move them out a little bit. Then smooth them out. Like this. Smooth this one out. Something like, oh, that looks wonky as hell. You know, something like that. Okay, so now we have this, we can expand it, and then we can join it with the center. Now we could use the pattern tool to create, oh, we're going to save this as dress texture. We could use the pattern tool to create lots of them, but it's going to be such a simple texture that I'm kind of tempted to literally just move these myself manually around and we want it to maybe not look too over the top something like this uh, do we want any to be half off why not let's have some that are half off I don't know how that's gonna impact it but well maybe let's avoid that let's just see how this looks I think just set that to the center. All right, let's save that as a texture. Export as use artboards dress texture. Now let's go back here. Here we have our object. First of all, I'll probably have to unwrap it, but we're going to just see what it looks like if I set this to image texture and open dress texture. Okay, yeah, it's looking a bit weird because, because I need to unwrap it. So let's just set it back to, let's try sphere one sec. Sometimes you can get away with it if you just set the projection mode to the right thing. But not this time. So let's open up a separate window. Go to UV editor. Oh, the hair does not look as good from this angle. <laughs> um, All right, so we here we have our texture, and here is one of our, oh, here's the, the plane we have selected, okay, so we can select everything, and here's what it looks like, right? So we can kind of maybe try and just cheat things a bit by moving this around to the right point. We're trying to avoid, uh... okay, here's what we'll do. Smart UV project. 
Okay. Now this is going to add each of these islands. And we can add, uh, we can move each of them around, right? For some reason one of them is... Uh... This is not, maybe not the right answer. Hmm, what is the answer here? Here's what we want to do, I think. Make the, create a lot more of these. Okay, let's try and use the pattern instead. Try and use the pattern tool pattern make. Okay, this is always a little bit confusing. Brick by row, brick by column, brick offset, width. What's the width do? There we go. Okay, height set to the same as the width. Um, copies five by five, nine by nine. Let's go for. Now we've got it. Ooh. Now there's a lot more of them. Let's try this. Why did that not work? What the hell? Oh, we need to like accept it or something. Done. No? What? How do we say done? How do we save a copy? Oh, I think I know. All right, so if we do flowers to the swatches panel. Okay, so we've made the pattern, right? Now we have to go to the swatches panel and apply our pattern. There we go. Now let's add a square behind it with the color that we want. Oh shit, that's not what we want. Uh, 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 uh. Add a new rectangle. Oh, I see, right. Okay, add new rectangle. Go back to our swatches. Set this one to just our red color. Move it behind. Let's try this. Dress texture. Export. Replace. Open. Dress texture. Okay, now we want to just unwrap. We can start placing some seams around here. So we're not really going to be looking at the bottom. First thing also, apply the scale. Ah uh, yeah, see that's, that is necessary. And then we can just readjust. Okay, that's going to stop it being distorted and things like that. All right, so I want to add a seam in areas where you're not really going to be looking. So control E, mark seam. And then let's say control E, mark seam. See how that looks? Not great. Control E, mark seam. Better. I'll tell you what we could do. All right, let's remove all the seams. Clear seam. Let's do seam, seam, all the way up to here, seam. Mark seam. That's much better. Look at this. Oh, the front looks not good. Okay, so let's do the same here. All the way down to here, seam. Better. Just a few things to sort out, mainly in this area. Um, there we go, right. If we click this button, we can keep in sync the vertices, vertices we've selected here and the vertices over here. So we can see where the problem is. So look here, it's cutting off the flower here. So to fix that, Let's select these, um, no, maybe not. What's the best way to fix this? Can we like, hmm, move things around until they don't overlap? 
It's kind of hard to do. Uh, I'm a little bit stumped here. How do we get this looking right? What if we... Hmm. Um. Hmm. Let's have a little sip of coffee. And think about this. Okay. I think we want to remove the seams that are along this edge because if we do that it okay so it's along the back edge now why is it like oh this makes no sense okay maybe we have to add those seams back in Hmm. I wonder how else we could do this. I wonder if we could do it with nodes. It's probably more trouble than it's worth. If we turned off the bevel. No, that doesn't make a difference. Okay, so part of it is literally just that this, this uh, flower is, is cut off. So I think what we need to do to start with, ah, right, is export, but make sure we press use artboards because then that will not cut that off. Um, so let's re-import the texture. Okay, then scale everything down. I don't really get right we're clearing all the seams clearing all the seams no seams we're gonna try this again we will try expanding it this way that's looking not bad we still have the issues around the seams. Where is this? Like here. But maybe we can fix this. Why? Why are we having this issue? Anybody know? Anybody know? We having it at the other side. Okay, the other side is much less extreme. Okay, first off, I just want to make it so none of these are cut off in the actual design. So maybe let's open back up the pattern menu, edit pattern. Uh, right, so. I keep using blender keybinds when I'm moving things around. It's really annoying. Okay, here, none of them are cut off. So let's try this, done. Uh, we need to move this. Uh, did this make a new one or something? Okay, maybe delete this, make a new one. No, you see that still has some that are cut off. Why? Ah, did I not save it? See, that should be possible. Done. Save as copy. Flowers. 
Yeah, I have used Substance Painter a bit. Um, you're right. That's probably would be would be more suited to this. Um, but I haven't used it that much. Okay. Okay, that's behaving exactly the same way. We want to make the flowers spread out a bit more. So let's just make the width and the height a bit bigger. That should be then easier. Let's try this. Apply. Let's see, why are these not changing? Done. Okay. So there, almost. Okay, let's literally maybe just move the artboard to fit the work. Can we do that? Window, artboards. I don't know. Yeah, see, it's going to move the artwork if we move the uh, move the thing. Okay, right. So how do we? So we got our artboard in the right place. How do we now move the pattern and not the artboard? That is my question. Um, that is my question. Because I do not know. See, I want this. <laughs> okay, well, what if I had this and then I export? Um, if I have this and then I export but I don't export using artboards if I just click export dress texture new ah that is gonna work but I just need to expand this to there export dress texture new now let's try importing this Hey, hey, oh, no, 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 I thought we had it. You know what, though, I wonder if... So this bevel is slightly to blame. I think the bevel modifier is what's kind of screwing things up a little bit. Like, if I... Hmm. We can just get it to a point where none of them repeat. All right, I've got an idea. I've got one final idea, right? I'm going to separate each of the faces so we can make sure that there's no there's no uh, flowers hanging off the edge, right? So these are seams unwrap. Okay, so we have this on its own. We have this on its own, and then we have this whole rim on its own, but we can even mark a seam here, mark a seam here, mark a seam here, separate everything. Here we go. I think we're onto something here, guys. Now we just have to make sure that none of these squares have any overlapping flowers, right? So I can move that down. I can take this, move it until there's no flowers hanging off the edge like there take this move it there take this move it to how are we going to do this one guys oh 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 i think there now the tr the tricky one we will rotate it, move it to maybe just like here. I think this might be it. 
Oh, the black. Why is that black? Because I've gone off the... Why is that black? Oh my god, what did I just do? What did I just do? What the hell? Oh, I know what I did. I accidentally unwrapped all of the other uh, things. It's fine. It's fine. But, so what have we got here? So this, what just, what? What? Ah. So, what is happening with, ah. But then why? Oh, because the bevel. So the bevel means that you need more space on the top and bottom, okay? Because the bevel kind of screws with that. So what I can do is expand it like this. Now there's nothing. Now why is this? Because we can't see what's happening there. Uh, thought I had it, boys. Thought I had it. I don't. I don't got it. Maybe here. And then expand it slightly on the X. Then what is this? Oh, you see again the bevel. The bevel is causing the problems. But I think we might be fixing it slowly. And here Bam, no more overlap. And then do this one. Why can't I select this? Okay, I think we're getting there. Almost. What is with the black? Okay, the black here is causing a problem, but I think, right, we can literally solve this by... Why can I not... Oh my god. Okay. By just scaling or moving up. Almost there. Almost there. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now it's just this one. Okay. And now, last issue is just this, there's a tiny little square here. Again, bevel problems. Oh, now I've just created a problem up here. Think I'm just bodging these problems, bodging them. I don't know why I can't select just a few of these. Okay. Now we just got that black issue again. Solved. Solved. Boys, I think we may have solved it. Now I do not think that was the optimal solution. Quite the opposite. But uh, it's solved. And it's looking all right. Going to save it. Now we're going to add the little straps for the dress. Scale on the X. Scale on the Y. Um, probably should have used a circle for this, but I didn't. But I'm going to add a subdivision. 
which will probably help us. Um, blah, 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 blah. And make it a red material. Shade smooth. Hmm. Yeah, that looks fine. Maybe just uh, extrude this uh, one up and then one da -da, something like this and then duplicate for the other shoulder position it Uh, should be slightly bigger on the both should be slightly bigger on the Y like this and then we can move them back a bit mm, I think it should be slightly flatter I'm wondering if I've used the wrong maybe I should have used a circle for now um, let me think here I think maybe if we yeah I think we've used the wrong the wrong primitive here we should use a circle instead 90 on the Y scale it down Edit mode. Why can't I extrude this? Uh, I don't know. Oh, vertice mode, then extrude. Select all of them, extrude, scale down, bring it down. This is better. This is much better. Okay. And we should make it smooth, but looks a bit weird. So maybe add some edge loops like this. Duplicate, bring it across, reposition it. Her shoulders are not 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 very well aligned. She should probably go to a physiotherapist, but. Uh, Okay, we're getting that, we're getting that. Um, you know what, I don't really like this foot. I'm gonna delete it, I'm gonna copy one of his feet. Let's see how this looks if we uh, uh, ba -ba -ba, rotate. Bring them kind of inside the body. And then we can maybe edit it a bit to just be more. I don't know. Thinner, I guess. Something like that. Maybe bring this out a little bit. If she's supposed to be kind of leaning on it. Maybe uh, scale it up a bit. God, they're way too big on the Y. Something like that. Coming together a bit, isn't it? Um, okay, we've got the neck, we've got the bracelet there. Um, we should probably add the other shoe and we should also like, I'm not really sure, do we need to do like an opening on this dress? Like if we did this, do we need to do extrude it in? I don't know. 
It's a, a, one of those things where the drawing did not include that, so... So I do not really know. For now, let's just create another another foot. So she has two, which is always useful. The hair does not look good, apart from, from the front. Um, but overall, it's looking it's looking decent. But are we done with the modeling now? Should we move on to materials? I think this bead should be blue, maybe? Yeah. Um, I might change the hair, okay? Bear with me here. I might change the hair. I might instead try a different tack, okay? So let's extrude the head and we're going to do a boolean type thing where we take a cut out of it to create the hair. What's the best way to do that? Let's say, let's say we have a cube. Let's try and add a deform, displace. Wireframe, subdivision, skin, remesh. I basically want the cube to be like a wave. Maybe, maybe a wave. Oh, does it need to have loads of, uh, does it need to be subdivided as well? No. Oh, something's happening. Height, width, fall off. Oh, is that literally? Oh, that does that. That animates a wave. It doesn't like. Let's try this. Now, displace needs a texture. Surface deform, mesh deform, curve cast. It's not what I'm looking for. All right, we'll do it manually. So let's create some, a bunch of, in fact, add a subdivision surface, simple, set it to two, apply, probably could use more than two, okay, set it to three, apply. Now let's grab the uh, proportional editing tool grab all of these edges move it uh, enable proportional editing move it like this all right and that's actually kind of what I want uh, let's see how this works if we scale it down turn proportional editing back off Uh, scale it, uh, rotate it 180. I'm thinking maybe we can just add some hair that's like, so you'll see what I mean. So if we add a boolean modifier, what's this called? Let's call it hair bool set this to hair bool set it to uh, intersect hide this set this to black You can see where I'm going with this, probably. Re-enable hairball. I think if we just set hairball, go to viewport display, set it to wire, we can now just have both. Um, bring this back over the head. Oh, I, I can immediately tell this is the way to go. Those those strandy hairs don't don't look great, but this looks a lot better. Let's get rid of these hairs, or at least hide them for now. Uh, 
Um, the only problem with this is that the bottom here, it's it's kind of uh, uh, let's make the whole thing a bit taller so that we can now drag this down. Hairball. I've lost the head now. There we go. Head with hairball. Okay. Just got to position it right, and we'll probably have to scale it up a bit just so that we can see it on the whole head. Scale it in the Y a bit. All right, hide that. I think it looks okay. It's not perfect. Yeah, I like it. I think it will grow on me. I think it's better than what it was anyway. Could even play with her having different color hair, maybe yellow. Yellow, blonde. <laughs> Maybe uh, brown. Uh, no, which 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 was the, this is the brown of the. Ah, I like black. Let's try uh, black shoes as well. Maybe. Too much black now. It's too much black. Hmm. And we can actually maybe use this bracelet to hide the seam in the in the hand. That might be quite useful. So if we grab Yeah, so the seam of the hand is now hidden mostly by the bracelet, which is which is much nicer. Unless of course you rotate the camera a bit, but depends what angle we do the render from, I guess. All right. I think we are ready to set up some lights. I mean, the one thing I'm not massively happy about is this part but I don't really know how else to solve this so instead for now I'm gonna start setting up the lighting and the camera and stuff so let's set up a plane here extrude ooh, extrude this edge up Uh, apply the scale, select this edge, control B, add a bunch of subdivisions, shade it smooth, select our camera, set the location to zero, rotation to zero, X rotation to that. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. We'll add a material. We'll call this back plane. We will go to our render settings, enable ambient occlusion. And you can see this, uh, if I move the plane up a bit, you can see it adds some shadows. 
where they are needed and it lets you see when so this she's hovering a bit off the ground here so uh, the other thing we need to do is start labeling all of the layers for Linda as well and make sure that everything that's part of Linda is in her collection so I can see that the foot the two feet are not so I'm going to move them in the bracelet is not Linda the mouth is not the back plane is also in here somewhere which is not is not right where is it oh it's in the air okay take the back plane out take the back plane so that it's just in the scene collection so that should be everything from Linda so let's select all objects bring them down a bit okay now we can see the little shadows that things are making bring her feet up a tiny bit now we can start trying to play with this ambient occlusion because we know depending on how close so you can see the shadow moving around there so we can move things around until they make a good amount of ambient occlusion and I see we've added lots of things to this collection that shouldn't be in it so let's take it out eyes so we can delete these pupils eyelashes yeah that should be everything we can move them slightly out there you go um okay the hair here is slightly cut off because the bull is cut off so let's move the bull down a bit there you go now the hair is fixed these are also slightly the head and the hair are a little bit cornery a little bit low res so we can add subdivision modifier oh maybe not uh, if we did we'd have to scale up the head a bit what if we add I also want to add one to the head possibly yeah and then here the problem is we've got the ball as well and the we need to set the origin point when we scale it so origin to geometry um, this is annoying right yeah scale the hair up a bit yeah the hair looks better when it's actually scaled up a bit but you do have these weird edges here, which I'm not sure. What if we... Nope. How do we get rid of those weird edges? We could scale up. We could increase the subdivisions. Hmm. It's part of the Boolean. So... Uh, what if we took the hair itself... So we've added subdivisions to the hair, but we haven't added subdivisions to the boolean. Do we need to do that? I think that is what it is. Um, yeah, you see it just looks weird if we add it. Okay, so we've added subdivisions to the boolean. That will have to do. I think that actually fixes the issue. We shouldn't be adding the subdivisions to the actual hair. Um, we can hide this. I think this is shaping up a bit. I think it is shaping up a bit. Now, but if we look in render mode, it looks terrible.
Um, so we need to add some lights, etc. One thing I'm going to do is add uh, is create. So we've got the Linda collection, we've got the Carl collection, we've got the scene collection. I'm going to split the lights out and just create a lights collection. We have this one light up here doing something. I'm going to create a new light, an area light. I'm going to rotate it on the X by minus 90. This is going to be like a backlight. So let's assume that we're going to shoot the camera from, from head on. And let's create a backlight. So we're just going to scale it up a bit. Bring it up off the ground a tiny bit. Ramp the power up like insanely. Like maybe a thousand watts, just see. The lighting here is where it's really going to come to life, I think. It's slow. And then you get these nice, like, little um, almost halos around. I'm going to add a subdivision to his head just to make it a bit smoother. Okay, which is what I did to her head as well. Okay, so we have a backlight. We can now probably delete this sunlight. That was just the default one. Let's create a area light again. Bring it up. Rotate. Bring it to an angle, something like this. 300 watts maybe. Let's have a look. Maybe a bit less. 200. I think 200. Scale it up a bit more. Rotate. Now that will be our key light. So let's name it key. Let's name this one back. Duplicate the key light. Bring it to the other side. And name this fill. So the point of this is, so the key light, if we ramp that up to, to 400, let's say, and then these shadows here are quite dark and you might like that, but I think you can add a key, you can add a fill light just to kind of make those shadows a little bit less dark. Bring them up a tiny bit, that's all. So maybe 150 for the, 150 watt for the fill and uh, 400 for the key. I've ran out of coffee. Okay. What else? We can add some color to the light, like a tint of color. So maybe we could make this fill light ever so slightly blue or like warm or cold basically. If you want to make it warmer you can add a uh, you can move it slightly to the yellow. If you want to make it colder, you add bring it to the blue. And then you can like potentially make like a warm fill and a, and a cooler, you see like a cooler uh, key light. But usually it should be fairly subtle. But uh, something like this. And this can be like better if you bring maybe the fill right to the side instead, you know. Um, and that way when you add like the cool blue to it, it's going to shine on the side. But I think for now, I'm going to bring it back to where it was. We will just keep it white. Actually, tiny bit blue. This one, 
tiny bit orangey. That's quite strong orange, isn't it, really? Hmm. I think, let's make her boots blue because she didn't have any blue. It would be like blue wellies. All right, now we could bring up the ambient background color a little bit. Uh, nah. See, as well, even if you don't like exactly how the render looks here, remember you can always take it into Photoshop or uh, After Effects or, or whatever you want to edit it in. Um, what else? The camera settings. We could add some depth of field. It wouldn't really do much to the characters, but it would uh, make the back background plane a bit blurred, which might be nice. So let's add um, an empty, which is what, where we want the camera to focus on. So ooh, add an empty, which is going to be by default in the center camera. Focus on empty. Bring down the f-stop. Oh, this is definitely the right empty. Okay, let's call let's call it something. Focus. Now go back to the camera. Now nah, you see we had the wrong one. Let's find focus. Focus. There we go. Now, you see if we do that. See now the um, backing plane becomes a bit blurred, which is nice. Do we want to change the color of the backing plane? I think white works quite well. But let's have a look. Maybe, maybe. Actually, yeah, I kind of like the blue. Um, but then the blue doesn't go too well with her shoes. Maybe a different blue. I don't know. I don't know. Something subtle. I mean, if we just literally picked one of our existing materials. Kind of looks quite cool. I don't know if that looks cooler than the white, though. Like, if we just make this white again. I don't know, actually, I think it maybe does look cooler. Yeah. I think maybe her, his feet are slightly off the ground. There you go. Just just adding the little minor details now. Um, what else? I think the lighting could use a bit more, a bit more uh, attention. Uh, a bit bit bigger, I'd say. This light. If we did it from a, an angle, I wonder. Nah, I kind of like it like that. If we literally ramped it up even higher, 3,000, that's probably too much. Nah, I think this works. Let's do a test render. Just do render image. Now, there's always stuff wrong, right? So like here, for instance, we need to make sure that the bull, hair bull does not render. I also noticed that these pockets are not looking very high res. Like the, I think the problem maybe is that we we converted them before we added uh, a subdivision to the ball, which might make this unfixable for now. Uh, but then again, it looks pretty high. It looks pretty high res. Um, what is a good way of fixing that? It's not like, it's not a game breaker. How bad does it look on the actual render? It does look a little bit bad, doesn't it? Look, it's, it's a bit jaggedy. Um, and look, we can see a slight problem with the dress there. So let's maybe try and fix that. Back to the dreaded dress. 
just this tiny little piece here. Where is this? This piece, ah, here. Oh, but it's not there, it's actually on one of these. Ah, here it is, you see? So let's just grab this one. Uh, no, yeah, no, this one. Yeah, this one. Just move it ever so slightly there. Oh, now it's got issues over there. Ooh. Reverse that. Scale it ever so slightly. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah. Move this ever so slightly. Nope, can't do that. Can't do that. Move it to the right. No. Scale it in the X. That's better. Problem solved. Okay. So now this is the center. It looks a bit off center to me, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's just because his arm comes out a bit more here. I'm now I'm now torn as to whether the back plane looks better. Um, what we're gonna do, or whether it looks better as white. Nah, I kind of like it like this. Bloom Bloom adds a tiny amount of adds something to it. I mean, look at the... it affects how EV renders the light and I don't know whether I like it or not. Maybe I do. I don't think I do. We're not, we're not gonna have bloom on. We can enable reflections. Why not? This, this part of his shorts is looking a little bit weird. I think maybe we should uh, grab this edge. Can we, like, bevel this? Not well. Maybe let's leave it. Maybe let's just leave it. I don't know if it doesn't look, doesn't look terrible. Uh, shadows, film. We could render it with transparency in the background, but we've got a back plane, so we're going to keep it like this. Let's now... I'm just wondering if the lighting is really how I want it. Because she's got no lighting like on the left of her arm, which is where I want it. The key light, the backlight. If we had the backlight like this, maybe there would be. We could do, add some point lights. Move them around to where we want some light. It's a bit of a cheat, but see, I want some light on her arm there, you see. So let's just add like a subtle light there. You can just take it to different places where you want some light. I think maybe like under his arm here. I don't know, just places where it would bring it to life a little bit. That's maybe a bit too much. Maybe on the top of his arm. Let's try this. What does this look like? Maybe like near his hat as well. And then just down in here. Yeah, something like that. Now, one thing I have noticed, her hair is looking a bit too shiny for what hair is. So we can up the roughness to something stronger like this. So that won't happen anymore. Same with the dress. Should be a bit rougher, less shiny. I mean, it does look quite nice when the reflections are coming off it, but that's not how clothes look. So maybe let's do the same with this. 0 0.8. 0 0.8. 
0.8. I don't know, am I kind of ruining it by doing that? Hmm. I think we're going back to yellow boots as well because now we've got the blue in the background. It doesn't look off balance so if we if she doesn't have any blue. I don't think. Um, and she's got the blue in her bracelet there. I think one thing that would complete the it's looking a bit too the like the the composition is looking like there's too much going on on the right, not as much going on on the left. So it's a pretty small thing, but what I will do take this bracelet and give her an earring we're going to just make the composition a bit more busy on this side just by adding this earring and the earring how should it be how should it be Something like that, maybe. Uh, does that look weird? Maybe it should be hanging down. That's a lot more clear, isn't it, if it's hanging down. And then we can move this up. 90. Da -da. I want to increase the thickness. Can I do that? I don't think I can do that. No, no well. How is this? I like it. I like it. And then we can even add like a light, like a weak light. Five radius down naught point one on the earring. Is that too much? Possibly too much. Power down three watts. Let's make this more metallic. Decrease the roughness. Yeah, look at that. Nice. Maybe even make this like behind the earring. I don't know, maybe. Hell yeah. And uh, now you see she's a little bit out of focus because she's behind him. Oh no, it's changed the... I accidentally changed the... that material to be like metal on him. I was supposed to do that separately. So this is yellow. Okay, let's create a new one. Uh, copy, paste. This one is not metallic and is rougher. And this is what... Uh, oh, no, no, no. Okay, reverse that. What we're going to do. Metallic. Right, so this is metal. The existing one we're going to change back. The metal one, this is going to use metal. So, metal, metal, and metal. Oh, nice. Now we're going to also go to the camera. And we're going to turn down the, well, make the f-stop a bit bigger because now she's more in focus again. All right. Hmm. Let's also make her little bead here. Let's make a new material. Uh, bead. Copy it. Paste. Delete this one make this one also metallic and not rough see if we can get some reflections off that it's such a small object it's 
probably not going to happen, but this one we can change to the metal. Very nice. Mm. The glasses maybe we can set to a bit. A glass is usually metallic. You know what? I don't really care if they're not. I feel like this is still going to make the render look cooler, so... Make a new material, copy the black onto it, so it's the same colour. Increase the metallic. Decrease the roughness. Is this actually working? Glasses, metal. It's definitely done something. But not much. But either way. Change these to glasses metal. Now they're a bit less matte now. They are a bit more reflective. Move the mouth closer to the face so we might get some shadows behind it. Hey, something's going on with the reflection there. Oh, that's because of this light. I like that. So we could even move that. We could even get another light. Let's get the light that we put on her earrings. Move it over to the to the glasses. Nah, it's not quite not quite exactly what I was hoping for, but nah, okay, let's delete that. It's not not great. What else? What else? Hmm. You know what? I think we might be done. I think we might be done. I mean, we can take it into Photoshop and give it like an edit or something. But in general, I really like it. I think possibly this hand is a bit too lit up right now. By this light. Let's have it more on the... I don't know, leave it where it is. Uh, turn up the roughness for the hat. I think we're looking good here. Um, hmm. Okay, let's render it out. Render image. Check everything. Looks fine. Let's save the image somewhere. Let's call it render. Open that up. Render, let's open it in Photoshop. See what we can do. Now I'm not amazing with Photoshop, so I'm literally all I'm gonna be doing is changing the brightness, contrast, and saturation but it can do quite a lot, um, just getting those right. Got it open here, so I'm just gonna just gonna come out of render view here so that my computer didn't, doesn't completely explode. Add an adjustment layer, let's go for saturation to start with. Oh, great, immediately, like just toggle that on and off. So it's subtle, but Oh, it just makes it so much more vibrant. You don't want to you don't want to overdo the saturation, but you definitely want a little bit a lot of the time, especially with Blender renders. Um, brightness is that too much? I don't think so. I think that is that that's too much. Something like twenty five. Nice. So like this is before. Add the saturation. Add the brightness. Looking good. Now, it does look a bit off-center, doesn't it? But, I mean, it's kind of not. Like, if I add a square and I center it, how do you center something in Photoshop? Uh, I literally don't even know how to do that. There we go. So that's centered. So that's where her foot is. 
Yeah, I could move them slightly to the left. Okay, let's move them slightly to the left. Or move the camera slightly to the right, even. So, G, X, there. Is that too much? Nah, I think that's fine. Render. Render the image again. Save it. Overwrite the render. Now, how do I... Can I... If I go window... Is there a links panel? Nope. I guess I'll just... Uh, place an image again. Or just drag it in. Get rid of the old one. See, now this is in line with her foot, basically. Yeah, I think that's better. Still looks slightly off center, but I think it's good. Now I'm just wigging out. I feel like it's not centered. It needs to be centered. So like this is the distance from the side to her arm. Oh yeah, it does. It still needs to move that way. Camera. Let's try that. How is this not having any impact? I don't understand. Am I moving it the wrong way? How can we how can we do this in here? Okay, let's do it in Blender. So this is the distance there. This is the distance there. That looks correct to me. I mean I know this is you've got the weird angle. In fact, there's less. Yeah, so it needs to move. Okay, let's let's keep both cubes here. This is probably a better way of centering it, but this is how I'm doing it. Here we go. Render. Oh, you know what? Last time I didn't save it. That's the problem. <laughs> and the two uh, the two cubes I just made. Delete them. Render. Save. Photoshop. Drag it in. Bring it down. Delete the old one. This square now is looking better. Yep. Woo! Uh, how about you like that? Don't know. There we go. So, save that as a Photoshop file. Alright everyone, I think we're ready to finish. I hope you guys found that useful. I'll be uploading it on YouTube afterwards. I've recorded it as well, so I'll probably edit it down into a regular video if you don't want to sit through hours. Um, but respect to everyone who just did um maybe one or two of you so yeah i hope you guys found that useful i'm gonna end the stream now uh, but that is how you can take your sketch that you've drawn and turn it into something cool in 3d